glass letter. Ethan Garrison lived a quiet, uneventful life in the bustling city of Greenville. At 28, he shared a small apartment with his grandmother, Liam Garrison, an 80-year-old woman whose dull and perpetually sad expression created a distance between them. Though he loved her, Ethan rarely spoke to her, finding it difficult to connect with her melancholic silence. One winter evening, while cleaning an old mailbox at the postal office, Ethan discovered an ancient-looking envelope. It was sealed with a faded red wax stamp, carrying no sender's name but address to Miriam Bittaker, 43 Midoville Lane, Willowfield. The postmark revealed that the letter had been sent 28 years ago in 1996. Something about its age and the mystery behind its known journey struck a chord in Ethan. Instead of discarding it, he decided to deliver it. Willowfield was a quiet village two cities away and it would take a day to reach the by train. Ethan, feeling an unfathomable pull, packed his bag the very next morning and embarked on his journey. When the train pulled into Willowfield station late at night, the village was a stark contrast to Greenville. The air was crisp, filled with the sounds of chirping of insects and rustling of leaves. Small huts and sprawling farmlands stretched across landscapes. Under the dim light of the stars, he then walked through the village searching for Meadowville Lane. Finally, he found it. A modest weathered house surrounded by overgrown bushes. He knocked twice. The creaking door opened, revealing an elderly woman, her face pale but kind. Who are you, son? she asked. Ethan stepped inside, shivering from the cold. The woman lit a fire in the hearth and handed him a steaming bowl of porridge. Sitting across from him, she asked again, What brings you here, son? Ethan pulled out the old envelope. Are you Miriam Bittaker? he asked. The woman's face froze in shock. She adjusted her glasses and stared at the letter, whispering, No, I am Anna Bittaker, Miriam's elder sister. This, this is addressed to her, but she died. 28 years ago, the very same year this was sent. With trembling hands, Anna broke the back seal and opened the letter. Ethan watched as her eyes filled with tears. The letter read, Dear Miriam, I am sorry. I never meant to hurt you. Misunderstandings have piled between us, and I've failed to mend them. I can't bear the weight of what's happened. I've decided to leave the city, but please know I have always cared for you deeply. I hope someday you can forgive me. Anna clutched the letter as soaps racked her frail body. She revealed that Miriam has died in a car accident on the exact day the letter was dated. She often spoke about a best friend. Anna said through her tears. But they had a falling out. She was heartbroken, but she never spoke ill of her friend. This letter, this would have given her peace. Ethan's heart sang. Seeing his expression, Anna reached into a dusty old box and pulled out a curb-covered diary. This belonged to Miriam. She dreamt of being a writer, but never got the chance. I think you were meant to have this. He then returned home with the diary, catching the midnight train, the Silver Line Express. As he arrived in Greenville, the city's power was out. By candlelight, as he read Miriam's diary, it was filled with her dreams of becoming a writer, her thoughts about life, and mentions of her best friend. Near the diary's end, five days before her death, Miriam wrote, she hasn't spoken to me in weeks. A big misunderstanding, yet it feels like an eternity. I have sent her letters, but there's been no reply. I miss her terribly and it's hurting me so much. I wish I could see Liam and her grandchild Ethan for the first time. Perhaps one day I will. Ethan froze. His grandmother Liam Garrison was Miriam's best friend. The sender of the letter had been his own grandmother who never received Miriam's responses. It explained everything, her sadness, her silence. That night, Ethan didn't sleep. Over the next two days, he wrote a book inspired by this strange journey, weaving together Miriam's dreams and their bittersweet connection. He titled it, The Last Letter. When the book was published, it became a quiet sensation. Ethan gave a copy to his grandmother, who read it silently. She didn't say whether she understood that story's deeper meaning, but for the first time in years, she smiled. A warm, genuine smile. To Ethan, that smile meant the world. A few days later, as he expected, Ethan received a letter from Anna Vitaka. Inside, written in bold letters were just two words. Thank you.